the elite performers look at time and use time completely differently than the people who perform at an average level. I'm going to tell you right now, either you're going to control your time or your time's going to control you. Either you are going to dictate the terms of your life or you're going to be somebody who reacts and responds throughout their life. When you wake up in the morning, the greatest thing you could do for yourself is not Let's talk about time today and how to bend it, how to manipulate it, and how to use it to your advantage. Let me tell you one thing I've noticed about all the max out performers that I've interviewed on my program and that I've known throughout my life for the last 30 years really in business, sports, entertainment, politics, you name it. The elite performers look at time and use time completely differently than the people who perform at an average level. And so I want to talk to you about some tips and strategies today to begin to think about time and utilize time differently. So let's start out. The first thing I want to tell you about people who win, who max out, they are in a much bigger hurry than the people who are average. And I'm not kidding you when I say this. They're in a bigger hurry to get to their destination, to get to their outcome. Their pace is faster, they walk faster, they talk faster, and their expectation when they're going to arrive at their destination is sooner. This may seem like a very small, subtle thing, but I want you to evaluate how big of a hurry are you in? Because there's something to be said about how close you think you are to a goal and how fast you will run to get to the finish line. Let me give you an example of that. If you and I started out right now and we had a 26 mile marathon to run, right? In our minds, it was 26 miles. And we were gonna race each other. We would pace ourselves at a certain speed in order to maintain that speed because of the duration of the run. So if it was a marathon, we'd jog, wouldn't we, pretty slowly. You certainly wouldn't sprint 26 miles. And so because the destination, because the finish line is so far away, our pace or our hurry is limited based on how far away we think we are or when we'll arrive there. But if you and I were to run a 100-yard dash, would the pace be the same? Because the finish line is so much closer, we'd run full speed from the minute we took off, wouldn't we? Because of the proximity of how close the finish line is. The people that win in life don't necessarily have more vision than you. See, it's not a lack of vision always that means that you are going to lose. It's a lack of a type of vision, which is depth perception. You think you're further away from the outcome, and so you pace yourself like it, and you jog all the time throughout your life. The people that win may have a bigger vision, but they have accurate depth perception. They understand how close their goals are, how close their outcome is, and they're constantly in a sprint to get there throughout their day. That means consequently, they get started earlier and they finish later. They get up earlier. Throughout the day, they're in a bigger hurry to get to the places they need to be because the finish line in their mind is so much closer. I cannot emphasize this enough to you, is just the pace and the way time shrinks for elite performers compared to the average. I'm telling you, the average performer can say the same things, read the same books, have the same schedule, yet the person who is in a bigger hurry throughout the day ends up winning the day, winning the week, winning the month, winning the year, and winning the life. And so please evaluate your pace. You should be in a so much bigger hurry than everybody around you. You almost have people telling you to slow down a little bit. So that's number one, is you've got to be in a bigger hurry. The second thing is the way we begin our day. I'm gonna tell you right now, either you're going to control your time or your time's gonna control you. Either you are gonna dictate the terms of your life or you're gonna be somebody who reacts and responds throughout their life. This device right here can both speed up time in your life or it can slow it down. It's not always a speed tool. So one of the tips that I've covered before but not enough people implement that I promise you is a quality of max out performers that relates to their time is they control it. They do not react and respond. They dictate the terms of their life most of the time. And that means this, when you wake up in the morning, the greatest thing you could do for yourself is not touch or look at this device for 30 minutes to an hour after awakening. So that when you wake up, you take control of your time. You control the time. You control the beginning of the day. You get clear, you meditate, you pray, you stretch, you think, you go through a gratitude exercise. You control the first 30 minutes of your day. It sets a tone that I'm in charge of my time, not what enters this. 
If the first thing you do is grab this, this now dictates the term of your day. This controls my day. What hits this, what email, what text, what call hits this, what Instagram posts hit this, this controls me. It controls my time. But if you can stay away from it for the first 30 minutes to an hour, you send a message to your brain to yourself that you control time, that this day is on your terms. And again, you stack up a day, a week, a month, a year, five years of a lifetime of you controlling and dictating the terms of your life for just the thir first 30 minutes to an hour every day. It will revolutionize your life. It'll be very difficult to do for the first 30 days, but after 30 days, you'll never have the desire to do it again. You'll completely flip your life around. I'm not suggesting that all max out performers dictate every turn. Of course I respond. Of course I react throughout my day. It's not the syntax or context of my day. I control my day. There are things throughout every day where we react and respond. There are conversations where someone says something to us. We clearly react and respond. But I'm the assessor of my life, not the assessee. I assess my life. I dictate the terms of my life. I'm not being assessed and I'm not being dictated to by other people all the time in my life. That's a huge separator in how people look at time for max out performers. The third thing is this. Why is a day only 24 hours? I mean, if the average people in the world or the majority of people in the world have a 24 hour day, why does that have to apply to you? Many years ago, I discovered, have you ever had a day where in four or five hours, you got more in the first four or five hours done or accomplished in your day than you had in a normal day? You ever have a four or five hour window, a six hour window like you go, I've got so much done in these six hours, it's more than I get done in an average day. And what I found out was, max out elite performers, people that perform at the highest level, they get more done in a six hour window than most people get done in a day, and here's why. Most people measure a day by 24 hours. So I started to think. I was young in business. I was in my early 20s. And one of the things that was held against me by other people is you're too young to win. You don't have enough experience. You just haven't have enough days of experience of your life, enough days in business to win. And I thought, well, how can I fix that? And here's how you can fix that. And I've adopted this now for almost 30 years. I want the average people I compete against to think they have a 24 hour day. My days are six days long. So I want to teach you the concept of running many days. My day, my first day is from 6 a.m. to noon every day. That's a full day for me. So I try to get done a full day's work from 6 a.m. to noon because I no longer have a 24-hour day in my life. I have a six-hour day. And so a day to me is that measure of time. It altered the complete direction of my life. It transformed who I am. So now from 6 a.m. to noon is a day. That's my first day every single week, 6 a.m. to noon, Monday morning. And what happens in that 6 a.m. to noon, I see there's a mental thing we have. I have a whole day to get all these things done. And so we stack and dictate and schedule our day over that 24 hour window of time. You'd be surprised if you shrunk the day to six hours, you can get the same things done in those six hours you used to get done in 24. From noon to 6 p.m. is my second day. And in that second day, I fill that up with, the, with a full day's worth of fun, memories, meetings, phone calls, you name it. Uh, meetings with my relationships in my life. In that six hour day, I pack out another day. From noon to 6 p.m., I fill that day up. And my third day is 6 p.m. to midnight. And in that 6 p.m. to midnight, same thing. My relationships, my meetings, my phone calls, my emails, the work I do is a third day. And so what happened was when I was in my early 20s, I went from having three days in the same window of time when the average person had one. And I started to accomplish triple what the average person was accomplishing. Now, once again, you stack up three days in 24 hours over a week, a month, a year. In just one year, I end up with over a thousand days and I'm competing against people who only have 365. Think about the mind-blowing difference could be in your life if you ran many days the rest of your life. I'm telling you right now that my days are six hours long. You'll be, the, the, the amount of work you could get done, the amount of compounding that'll take place in your life, it's gonna blow your mind. When you start looking at your schedule, day one is 6 a.m. to noon. Day two is noon to 6 p.m. Day three is 6 p.m. to midnight. Your whole existence is going to change. And it'll be kind of fun in the beginning. You'll mess it up, but you stack up a week or two and you do that for a month. Imagine that in one month getting 90 days. Think about what would happen in your life if in a month you had 90 days and the rest of the world, the average in your life, imagine that for a second. The rest of the world only had 30. 
and you stack that up over a year or three years, how different would your life be? And I'm telling you, I'm an example of how different your life would be. I'm an example of what that productivity and compounding in your life can look like. More fun, more memories, more meetings, more encounters, more relationships, more experiences, more money, more achievement, more joy, more bliss. I'm creating opportunities constantly. So what I do is I shrink the finish line. So there's sprints all the time. And so because I only have a six hour day, I'm in a hurry throughout that day. I'm not jogging, I'm not walking, I'm in a big hurry. And you're gonna be amazed at the transformation of your life. I may never give you a bigger gift than the concept of six hour days. I think I'm one of the only people you'll ever hear explain this to you. But I can tell you, I started to study these successful mentors. My, my, my gosh, they get so much done before nine o'clock in the morning. My gosh, by one o'clock, they've accomplished so much. And the average person is just stretching, getting out of bed, done their first appointment or two. Especially you entrepreneurs out there, how critical this is. Because when you're an employee, at least as an employee, to some extent, they control your time. They dictate. You need to be here at 9 a.m. You can't leave until 5 p.m. And so although that's a, that, that's a nuisance, it helps you be more productive because they're paying you, they tell you when to be there. But what happens for most entrepreneurs, they don't realize when you become an entrepreneur, you've taken on three jobs, four jobs. It requires more time, but people start to relax. Ah, oh, my time's mine, my time's free. I love the freedom of being an entrepreneur. There's the greatest fallacy in the world is that you are free as an entrepreneur. And as a matter of fact, you have more responsibility, more obligations, more accountability when you're an entrepreneur because there's no guaranteed money coming in. The, the biggest mistake, the biggest misnomer, the worst thinking you could have as an entrepreneur is that somehow you're free because you don't have a job. Just because you call yourself an entrepreneur, if you are one, doesn't make you free. In fact, it makes you less free. And so what will make you free is really being free, really getting financially independent, really having enough money that you would never need to work again, really having enough money that if you didn't want to take a meeting, you didn't have to. So stop deluding yourself into this false sense of freedom because you call yourself an entrepreneur. It's hilarious and it's why you're losing. You have this fallacy, this relaxed state of freedom where you're going to get around to doing things and you get to go to the gym anytime you want to and you're wearing your sweats at 10.30 in the morning, right? You wouldn't do that if you work for someone else you don't do that when you work for you and so the greatest thing I can give you is the gift of many days the next thing I want to share with you is that there needs to be an alarm clock where performance is measured performance improves secondarily the more you can shrink the time frame where you measure performance the better chance you can have to alter that performance and improve it so what do most people do they measure their performance the average people in the world measure their performance at the end of every year New Year's Eve, right? They take an account, but here's my life. Here's what I accomplished. Here's what I didn't get done. And once a year, they take a look at themselves, they make an adjustment, and their performance improves. They measure their performance, they measure their results, and then they make an adjustment. So they adjust about once a year. Pretty good performers shrink the time frame. At the end of every month, most companies kind of do an inventory. Most people do an inventory. They look at their books. They look at the profit and loss. They look at their schedule, and they make an adjustment after they measure that performance at the end of the month. Really good people kind of get together on a Sunday night if they're pretty good performers. Once a week, they measure their performance, they make adjustments, and they move on weekly. And then there's really top level performers, and they do it at the end of every day, don't they? At the end of every day, they sit back, they look at their calendar, they look at the results, and they measure the performance daily. Well, who do you think is going to do better? The person who measures it once a year? once a month, once a week, or once a day. We all know the better adjustments, they've shrunk the time frames down, they adjust, they get better, they improve daily. And then there's the max out 1% of 1% performers. And they have a clock that goes off every hour. Every hour in their head, a, a alarm goes off in my mind. It's sort of weird, but it works. I'm addicted to it now. About every hour, the top of every hour at 11 a.m., it's funny, my mind just knows, what did I do to move closer to my goals? What did I do to move closer to my outcomes? Have I achieved the things on my to-do list today? Have I achieved my biggest and baddest outcomes of the day? And every hour, did I move closer? Did I move closer? What adjustments do I need to make? What do I need to celebrate? What tweaks? What's been accomplished so far? An hourly alarm clock goes off in your head. If you can get to the point where you just begin to practice it, and maybe for now, you program this thing to go off every hour, just to remind you, what did you get accomplished? And maybe when that hour goes off, you know what flashes on the screen? your outcomes and your goals. Hourly, the alarm goes off. Hourly, the alarm goes off. It'll begin to train you to begin to measure the time frame of your performance 
every hour. Now let me ask you a question. There's a group of people that measure their performance, their race, their marathon is once a year. Then there's those that do it once a month that make adjustments and measure where they are and increase effort. Then those that do it monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. I can tell you that I run many days and I measure my performance hourly. It will transform your life. You will become more productive in your family, in your personal relationships, in your faith, in your business, in your fitness, in your nutrition, in your money, in every area. If just something goes off every, by the way, it's a five second, just reminder, am I moved closer to my outcome? If I move closer to my to-do list today, what adjustments do I need to make? You'll be reminded at that time of someone you forgot to call, an email you didn't return, a meeting you haven't asked for yet, uh, but something you were supposed to eat, hydrate, whatever it is, if you can begin to have that alarm, just go, it's just five seconds, it's just every hour, it's just five seconds. And I'll tell you, it happens to me constantly now. And I know that one of the reasons my life has improved is because I've shrunk the time frames down of where I measure my results right, where I recalibrate, where I course correct, where I make an adjustment, where I realize I'm behind, or I've made a mistake, and I improve a performance. And so, so far, can you imagine if you started just being in a bigger hurry, and you had perception correct about how close you really are to your goal. The difference in winning and losing is this much. It's like a veil. And when you remove that veil, you see, my gosh, I'm so much closer. I promise you, one of the things that you suffer from isn't just like a lack of vision and clarity. I wish you more clarity and more specificity in your vision. And I wish you more proximity, that you knew how much closer you were to achievement than you think you are. In fact, it's the fact that you think you're so far away from achieving these things that's causing them to constantly constantly stay that far away from you because you're not running fast enough towards them. You're not measuring them fast enough. You're killing your goals and your dreams by thinking they're so far away. It kills everything. If you knew how close you really were, you'd run so much faster. So if you altered that, if you altered the first 30 minutes to an hour of your day and you just stopped letting yourself be a reactor, but you took control and became a dictator of your time, if you manipulated and bended time like I have to where a day is six hours, let the rest of the world think a day is 24 hours. And by the way, someone just made that crap up a long time ago. An hour of measurement, 24 hours is a day, 360. 65 is a year. Someone just made that up and everybody's bought into it. Well, guess what? I've made mine up. My days are six hours long. I've just manipulated and changed time. It's a figment of our imagination is how time works. And what if an alarm could go off every hour in that mind of yours, in that heart of yours, just checking, just a wake up call, just a wake up, just an alarm. Hey, am I closer to my goals? Am I closer to my outcome? What adjustments do I make? What course corrections? What was achieved? What am I grateful for? It's just a five to 10 second reminder and you're back off to the races again. If the earth spins around once, we call that a day. If the moon goes around us once, we call that a month. If we go around the sun once, we call that a year. It's just stuff people made up, right? And so time is a figment of our imagination and if you'd use your imagination, Imagine what you could accomplish if you shrunk the time frames down. The last thing I want to tell you about time is that the best people I know have a focus on the future and use their time in the present. They focus on the future and use their time in the present. Too many of you are focused in the past and are thinking all the time about the future dreaming and aren't taking advantage of the present. The present is a gift and we need to treat it as such. The past is literally gone forever. And in many cases, it's a figment and a manipulation of our imagination. The future is grand and powerful, and we need to be focused there and thinking about it and dreaming about it because we are pulled towards it. But the best people can simultaneously be dreaming and optimistic about the future and take massive action right now. Most of the max out achievers I know in my life spend almost 0% of their time on the past. And I'm talking about people who have pretty darn good past in some cases as well. It is wasted time. You are wasting time. You're stealing and robbing your future and your present by focusing any of your attention or thoughts on the past. The past, if it's negative and wasn't positive for you, is a place you should avoid forever. It's not coming back. It doesn't exist anymore. All we really truly have is this moment right now and our dreams about the future. If the past was wonderful and you were a high school quarterback or had a business victory or got a college degree or had an achievement there, those things aren't your present and aren't your future and dwelling on them and focusing on what you've done previously is not going to produce for you a future. Here's the truth. Your past does not 
equal your future. What will equal your future is what you do in the present. And so I want to encourage you to take these tips I've shared with you today, and I want you to know, if you would make a couple of these changes, I can assure you your future is closer to you than you think it is if you'll take massive action right now in the present. I'd also hope that if this helped you here today, that you would share this with someone that you believe in, that you care about, and that you think that this could serve. I'm always here to help you, and I hope today did exactly that for you. Max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week, and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.